Welcome to Grace Bible Church. My name is Jacob Hanton. I'm one of the pastor elders here. And we are going to do what we do every week at this point in the service, where we pause and take a piece of bread and a cup filled with juice and remember Jesus. We call it communion. It's, it's something that, that we get to do with our, the, our Bibles open on our lap and our minds together Every one of us, every believer, do what you've been doing throughout the week. But we do it together and we set our eyes, fix our eyes on Jesus. So if you don't have a Bible, just raise your hands. We have some men who will pass one out to you. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 12. So you can go ahead and find that while we proceed. The Christian life is often likened to a race in Scripture. But it's much closer to an ultra marathon than it is to a sprint. I don't know about you, but there's often a very real, very real threat to growing weary. Threat every day. Often I have to fight multiple times throughout the day. There's often temptation that just doesn't let me rest. I don't know if you've ever faced that type of temptation where you just say, I, I don't know if I can endure this throughout the night. Maybe I should just go ahead and sin. I, I don't think I could endure with that person patiently. I'm just going to give up. I'm not going to try. I can't keep obeying every day, every week, every year. There's a, sometimes a, a trial or a, a trial, a temptation, a struggle just seems to overwhelm you. It, I, I don't know if, it, maybe say, I don't know how I'm going to live life without a spouse, right? We've, we've had a few of those. I, this is going to continue every day, every week. God, this is wearying. Maybe in the, in the face of, of chronic pain. God, just one night of sleep. I'm just too weary to go on. Another family member gets cancer. Maybe work. I don't know where my next paycheck's coming from. I'm going to lose my job. Maybe something more mundane. Just, I'm so tired of these kids. God, help me. And, And in the midst of that, there's a very real struggle. There's a very real possibility of growing weary, of not enduring in holiness, not enduring in faith, right? You have to endure in your Bible reading each day, endure in prayer, endure in honoring God with your thoughts and words. We need to fight for endurance in parenting well, endurance in contentment, endurance loving the one who's hard to love, in counseling those in the body who are difficult to counsel, enduring and receiving counsel, endurance in sharing the gospel, endurance in service in the church, right? Next generation ministry it's over and over and over again in small group when you just feel like you need a break. Endurance in fellowship in the church, sometimes just the busyness of the world, the thoughts, the cares of this world threaten to to choke out faith. There's so many things that are fighting for our attention, so many things that are threatening threatening us or threatening our, our attempts to run this race with endurance. And so in in Hebrews chapter 12 is the right as the author tells us about this faith, this race of faith that we have to run. He gives one command. As we read it together, I want you to look for the command. There's one imperative. We're going to read 12 verses 1 through 4. Look for the command here so we can see what we are to do. It says, therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance in sin which so easily entangles us And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, 
fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. There is one command here, one imperative. What was it? It's consider him. That's an active calling to mind, right? It's not just saying, okay, I know that. Let's move on. But he says, in this race, consider him. Consider Jesus. Actively ponder and respond appropriately. It's more than just knowing or being familiar with facts. And you don't only consider Jesus at communion, taking a time out from real life, and consider Jesus at communion now with the bread and juice in your lap. No, you have to consider Jesus as you run, as you live, as you go out into this world. Tomorrow when you go to work or you wake up and you have this whole list of, of things to do and it just seems like you just can't get the laundry folded, what do you do? You consider him. As you're overwhelmed, you're fighting for obedience, you consider Jesus. Above all else, your mind must be preoccupied with that one consideration. Consider Jesus so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And Jesus wisely gave us this regular discipline of the Lord's Supper, where we all as one church body come together and fix our eyes on Jesus together. And it should be a time when we do together what we've done individually and in small groups, as families, and just you and yourself on your knees in prayer as you start the day and then as you need help throughout the day. We consider Jesus remembering him, trusting him, looking beyond our circumstances to where he sits at the right hand of, the, of God, having, he's the author, the perfecter of our faith, and a perfect example of our faith. So what do we consider about him? Even in all of timeless eternity, we won't exhaust uh, the, the glories that we get to consider about Jesus. But in this passage, we have our eyes called to consider Jesus' endurance and faith to aid us in our own endurance by faith. So consider Jesus. Hebrews 4.15 tells us that he was tempted as we are and without sin. Consider Jesus' patient love and endurance with his disciples and with you and with me. Consider Jesus' endurance in all-night prayer, in healing the masses, and patiently teaching his disciples the same things over and over again. Consider what Hebrews 2, 12, 2 tells us about Jesus, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Jesus in the garden the night before he would die, facing the Father's wrath for sins that weren't his own, sweating blood and praying, begging, begging his Father in the midst of a task that just seemed overwhelming, as he prayed for endurance, he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then speaking figuratively of drinking the cup of God's wrath against the sins of all those who would have faith in him so that we could receive eternal life with him, Jesus prayed again. And just imagine him. These might be comfortable words that you're familiar with, but imagine Jesus in tears, trembling as he cried out, longing for endurance to obey and obeying. He said, my father, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will be done. Then he hung on the cross naked and he looked out on his murderers and mockers and endured still more, asking God to forgive them, even as he purchased our forgiveness by his death crying out in agony as he drank that cup of wrath down to the dregs, drinking that wrath that would have taken an eternity for me never to get to the bottom of. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
and he endured till the end when he could say before he died, it is finished. Jesus endured. In your endurance, look to him. That same one who's raised, he's at the Father's right hand. He's the author, perfecter of your faith. And I promise you that whatever the path is that's set out before you and me, even if it feels like, God, why? Why this right now? I can assure you that it's not random. It's not capricious. It's been ordained for us in love by the very one that provided the faith that you have and the goal of that faith, which is that we get to be with him in eternity, in joy, in joy, where all of a sudden all of this gets put into perspective and we get to see with our eyes what we now get to consider with our hearts as we look to him. So men, as you come to serve us, that bread and juice, you get some physical reminders of the hope that we long for, the one that we get to look to. So as you take that bread and juice on your own, consider him and resolve, think, how can I consider him better this week? Think of the, the trial, whatever is going to come up this week that's going to threaten to derail your thoughts, that's going to capture your mind, distract you from Jesus. Think, how am I going to do this in the midst of that this week so that you don't grow weary in your fight? And if you're here and you don't have faith, if you like, that's just foreign to me, or by your own admission, you're not a Christian, this time isn't for you. We're so glad that you're here, but just let the bread and juice pass. But please, I beg you, if you don't know Jesus in faith, don't leave here without talking to me, one of the elders, or really anybody here who you see taking that bread and juice, let them tell you of the hope that they have in Jesus. So men, come serve us, take communion on your own, and I'll come up and pray in a few minutes.